Star Lord 1220, a mighty barbarian host swept westward out of Asia to wage war upon the civilized peoples of the earth, obliterating all living things in its path. The tidal wave of death and destruction surged into Persia, where it met and slaughtered the army of Samarkand. Known as the Golden Horde, the Tatar legions and their allies, the Kalmyks, were the most ruthless military force the world had known. of the Horde was the great destroyer himself, the scourge of God, Genghis Khan. Behold your enemy, the Lord of Samarkand, whose army my Kalmyks have put to the sword. What think you of your prophecy now, Prince of Islam? What power will you call forth to save your city? Samarkand still stands. And he who comes to destroy Samarkand shall himself be destroyed. Almighty Khan, if he himself believe this legend, he will have stayed behind his walls and have not come against you with an army. My warriors are as many as the trees in the forest. Your ancient prophecies shall not stand in their path. It is not Allah's will that I live to see it. But in his time, the true God will smite you from the face of the earth. Juchi, this, my son, will be your authority. Destroy Samarkand. Return it to the earth whence it came. The Kalmyks come to you as allies, not vassals. A promise was made. What the Kalmyks conquer belongs to me, Tuglak, the leader of the Kalmyks. My word is like steel, not to be broken. What do you desire, Tuglak? The spoils of Samarkand. The slaves, cattle, and grain belong to the army. What is left is yours. Go with Juchi and take them. Am I a child that you must send Tuglock as co-commander? My orders are to be obeyed, not questioned. Go! <laughs> Raven, go you also to Samarkand. Be my eyes. Watch over my son. Send word to me each day of all that my ears should hear. And from out of the west came a gallant band of men clad in iron. Crusaders whose destiny was also Samarkand. It's a land of strange sights we're in. See who the fellow is, Gil. Christians, how came you here? Astride the stallion. Take me to your leader. That I will. Sir Guy. I'm Captain Harat. My horse went leave. I have need of a mount to reach Samarkand. <laughs> then we're well met. For that's our destination, too. And we're in a fair way of being lost. How far is it? A good 12 hours ride. Then you shall rest here with us and welcome. Tomorrow we'll ride with you. Meanwhile, Squire John will. Squire! Squire John! By the saints, Sir Guy, this is no time to wake an honest man. <laughs> He'll tend your wound, Captain. Oh, it is Tartar blood, not mine. And there's no time to rest. The army of Samarkand has been destroyed by the barbarian horde. The city must be warned. 
The barbarians, you say? We've ridden far to find those heathen. And by the saints, I'm afraid we have. A fire arrow. I've seen many such in the Crusades. Oh, these hills swarm with barbarian patrols. They've seen us. It's their signal to close in. We must ride for our lives, quickly. The devil we will. We'll give them a warm reception and an empty one. Get ready, lads. Unpleasant guests are approaching. need of them when we get to Samarkand. When last I saw your uncle, his exalted highness was being taken prisoner by the Kalmuk chieftain. But they keep no prisoners. By now, he too is dead. Mine would have been a kinder fate, Your Highness, had I been left with the others on a battlefield, rather than to bring you these tidings. Enough lie dead on the battlefield, Herat. Would that they too could have come back to us. At least they died with honor, Your Highness. Only in the peculiar thinking of men does that make them less dead. In my father's reign and in his father's before him, we always defeated our enemies by our wits. Why this time, Torga, did we take to the sword? The ancient prophecy failed us. Your uncle had no other choice. I would have thought of something. Why was I not sent to the Tartar Khan? His own wise men have promised him that he is destined to rule the world. Would you be the astrologer to tell him that he shall not? But suppose Naza had thought of a pleasing prophecy for the years of the Khan. Then it could have been of no help to us, Your Highness. I'm not so sure. He comes of a superstitious race, this Genghis Khan. Perhaps he will... spread a fine feast for us, lads. Eat and drink heartily. By the saints, Sir Guy, tis a welcome sight. The Englishmen, Your Highness. But for them, I would not have lived to reach Sam again. They were hungry. I ordered them fed. Their leader waits to be presented. <laughs> Draw the curtains, lady. Yes, my lady. Your Englishmen seem in festive spirits, Her Highness. I should think they'd be weary. They thrive on fighting, Your Highness. Until I came upon them, I thought nothing living could withstand the barbarians. They... They should be rewarded for their services. Give them gold and send them on their way. But we have need of such men, Your Highness. By nightfall, the barbarians will beat our gates. I've already ordered my people to the hills. Assemble the remaining guards and ride swiftly to join them. Your Highness, surely it cannot be your intention to remain. Go, Herat. I know not what wild scheme you plan, but since your uncle isn't here to dissuade you, I must. I forbid you to endanger your own life and the lives of others. Those who stay with me shall do so of their own choice. I will order no one. You are free to go with her. You were placed in my charge. 
Whatever comes, I will be at your side. What in the inferno blazes is the matter with the wench? Has she taken leave of her senses, or was she born without any? Have you no sand in your bellies that you take orders from a stupid female? It is not for me to question the command of the princess. Then, by the saints, it is for me. Then do so. Since you have nothing to say, we can conclude this audience quickly. My Grand Vizier will give you gold for the services you have rendered, then you will oblige us by leaving. The lady, I'm no hired mercenary to be paid and dispatched with a godspeed. Then who are you? Go. To the princes, emirs, and kings of the East, greetings. The Council of Christian Kings presents and commends its faithful servant and ambassador extraordinary, Sir Guy of Devon, Warden of the Marches, who will relate in person the mission entrusted to him. Well? I am sent to learn what there is to know of the barbarians, the size of their armies, their methods of fighting, and their destination. And if need be, to warn their Khan to stay out of the West. For so important a mission, you are hardly what I would expect of an ambassador. None other had stomach for the venture, my lady. And the pay is good. Then you are a hired mercenary. Only when necessary, my lady. In your case, with the right provocation, I'd pledge my sword without thought of monetary reward. Thank you, Sir Guy. But the service of your sword is not needed. It is already pledged. Just seeing you is provocation enough. Besides, I've already vowed to the women of your household to stay and protect them. Tell me, Sir Braggart, just how do you propose to do this? Well, with what soldiers you have and your able-bodied men, we'll hold the walls against all comers. For how long? Until the barbarians know they've been in a good fight. With only 40 swords and a prayer, Your Highness, we had the Tower of Tripoli against the entire Saracen army. And you were victorious? We held out for six weeks. Then those of us who survived leaped into the sea. And then? The Saracens leveled the city. But you fought bravely and your men died with honor. That they did, my lady. All the minstrels of Christendom sing of that gallant siege. I'm sure they do. We have matters to discuss, Sir Guy. <laughs> a stranger yet I feel I can trust you and lean upon your strength I saw in my life a yours to command I bow it on the cross then I do command you sir guy gather your men and be gone from the city before the Tartars come what it is the one way you can help us most by the devil you know nothing of such matters warfare is man's work I'll handle the defense of your city you vowed that your sword and life are mine to command. I have commanded. Do you obey or is your Christian oath just empty words? I'll tolerate no such trickery. My vow was to protect you. Your sworn oath was to obey me, and I order you to go from the city. By St. Christopher, I was right in the first place. You're a pigeon-brained half-wit. Get out. <laughs> In my country, they burn lunatics at the stake. You should try it sometime. On your feet, lads. We go to meet the barbarians for ourselves. The Englishman is rash, but very brave. He could have served you well. He's a meddling fool. He could do nothing here but interfere. Interfere? With what, Your Highness? My plan to save my people. And Samarkand. <laughs> I thought Genghis Khan to be a man of your years, Torga. He is, Your Highness. Apparently, he didn't think us worthy of his attention. What are we to do now? Our new prophecy was for the ears of the Khan. 
While I consider the matter, I shall change into something more pleasing to a young man. Meanwhile, rehearse the prophecy well. Your Highness, I must forbid this madness. Barbarians and thousands are encamped outside the walls. I beg you, escape while it is yet time. Have no fear for us, Torga. I and each of my women carry a small draught of poison. Should we need it? Go now and receive our guests. this not. It smells of a trap. There is no cause for you to fear, Tugluck. The people run and hide like sheep. My guards will herd them out. There's rich loot here. And the food is poison, no doubt. Eat your fill, noble guests. No harm will come to you. I am Torga, Grand Vizier of Samarkand. Her Highness Princess Shalimar bids you welcome. Welcome, then unguarded walls, reek of cunning lord. Be careful. Speak straight, Persian. Where are the people of your city? Where are your warriors? They fled. Only the princess and her attendants stayed behind. It seems their princess has no fear of us. Bring her to me. If she pleases me, Perhaps I shall not put her city to the torch until tomorrow. I have already ordered any women found taken to my tent. When I say so, Kalmuk, not before. Their soldiers fought well, Lord. Did they suddenly change into jackals and desert that princess? Or do they lie hidden to spring upon us as we sleep? We have no soldiers left. They died at your hands in the mountains. By my head, I swear there is no longer a fighting man or weapon in all of Samarkand. He's back. Liar, the cheat, he'll ruin all we planned. The ambassador from the Christian kings of the West. My mission is to the great Khan of the Tatars. Is he here? No. Who speaks? Juchi, son of the Khan. Commander of the advance guard of the Horde. Sharing that command with me, Tugluk, commander of Kalmuks. Your mission is not stated. Why seek you the Khan? To give him warning from the Christian kings that his Tatars are not to set foot in the West. Who comes from a king to Genghis Khan must be taken to the Khan. It is the law of the Horde. But it is also the law that no ambassador shall have weapon men at his back. Go. Squire John, stay here. The rest of you lads, back to the arch, yonder. I've high regard for my back, my lord. And law or no law, I'm loath to leave it wholly unguarded. But now, noble lords, the feast waits. Eat, drink, and enjoy yourselves. That I will. And tis a pleasure to dine in such merry company. I should have poisoned that English lout. He'll spoil everything. Your plan is already spoiled, Your Highness. There are two commanders. You cannot marry both. Until he came back, I was hopeful of being safe for marrying either one. Your Highness, I thought the purpose of the new prophecy was to accomplish your marriage. That was before I knew there were two commanders. They obviously dislike each other. With a little encouragement, they might like each other less. Perhaps even kill each other. Oh, if only that meddling Englishman had stayed away. A merry life, and a short one to you, men of the Khan. None has the wit to have poisoned the wine, my lord. You've nothing to fear. <sighs> Tis a rare wine. Not only safe, but a pleasure to drink. My father will like your coming, Ambassador. If 
will please them to learn that the men of the West are clumsy and their weapons unwieldy. Many are dead who caught likewise. Girl, show him what a stout English bow can do. Between the eyes of the griffin's head. is foreordained. Your coming, O oh Lords, was destined to be. This is Nather, the astrologer. To him alone are revealed the secrets of the Book of Fate. Did you not think it strange, O oh noble Lords, to find the gates of the city open and a feast prepared to welcome you? Did you not wonder that the princess herself remained with her servants to greet you? She has long awaited you, illustrious princess, for at her birth, the stars foretold that one day, out of the east, a mighty conqueror would come to Samarkand. And it was ordained that the Princess Shalimar would wed this mighty conqueror. And from Samarkand, they together would rule the world. Noble Princess, Her Highness Shalimar, Princess of Samarkand. into each other's throats. You are leaders of the Horde. Sent to level this cursed place to the dust. Do so, and let us be gone. The conqueror promised by the stars comes not to destroy, but to defend Samarkand. For this shall be the ruling city of his empire. Which of you sits at my side? Which of you is the mighty warrior for whom I have long waited? Oh, Talmud! It is not for you to move before the son of the Khan. By order of the Khan himself, the gold and women of Samarkand are mine. And take your pick of the slaves. A princess is not for you. The one has cast a spell upon you. Are you so blind? You do not see this thing was planned? This sword is pledged to protect the princess. Get back to your swelling, barbarian. Get out of here!
by firing the palace. Hold out here till you see the flames, then break for the hills. I'll join you later. Now dismount, lads, and drive your horses through the gates. your princess in this tent. Where is she? With the Christians. With your own eyes, you saw her taken from the great hall. She was not with them when they rode away. Now her women are also gone. Where do they hide, Persian? The palace is vast, and so is the city, I know not. <laughs> us together and hurry up little time from the astrologist tower I saw you and your men being besieged in the ancient storage vaults I was about to inform her highness uh, so she was worried about us she didn't say so but I don't think it'll displease her to see that you're still alive small thanks to her we'll lead these stairs to passengers throughout the palace and to the ancient catacombs below the city the princess hides in the tomb of her ancestors the wench gives me further trouble she's liable to join them Infernal door. It is the English ambassador. I told your highness. He bears a charmed life. Let him in. Open! Open, I say! What's the meaning of this foolery? Why bar the door? Will avail you nothing once the barbarians find this place? And find it they will if you don't cease your bellowing. I have no time for polite conversation. How deep is this place below the palace? The depth of 30 stone steps. Good. Then the women will be safe here from the flames. Stay with them till I return. What flames? What has happened? Nothing yet. But I shall shortly fire the palace to draw off the barbarians besieging my lads. You're worse than the barbarians. Then when my men are free, I'll have them put the torch to the whole city. And in the confusion, we'll come back for you. And you called me half-witted. Tis better strategy than rotting here with your ancestors. Unless you want to throw yourself to that Kalmuk bear. We are in no danger. Well, my men are, and I've wasted enough time in talk already. I'll offer you a bargain. If I save the lives of your men, will you withdraw your vow to protect me and leave me to chart my own destiny? That I will, my lady. And good riddance to you. Then come with me. I will return to the palace, your highness, or the Tartar sentries will be hunting me. This will take us up to the vaults near the gates of the city. Very clever, these Persians. When we return, you will go through this passage. It leads to the hills beyond the city. Then why are you still here? Why emblazes them to take it? If all else fails, I will. But only then. By the eternal. A moment ago, Sir Guy, you swore to stop interfering. Well, whoever built this was a shrewd general. At least one of your ancestors must have had some brains. The shrewd general was my great-grandmother. She had the passage hewn through rock to go to the man she loved. The poor shepherd in the hills. It is one of the legends of our family. Hmm. Not to my liking. If you any sort of a man, he'd have dug the tunnel to her. As you would. 
If she looked like you, yes. I think my great-grandmother would have loved you, Sir Guy. Unfortunately, she's dead, and I'm in a hurry. Take me if I ever look at another blasted female. May the saints protect us. Never mind your saints, but I just pray that that gate holds. My last arrow, Gil. May the saints grant us a miracle and be quick about it. This way, lads. your tales of saints and angels for the last time. For if ever I saw an angel, it was the princess standing by Sir Guy in that passageway. May the devil strike me, Your Highness, if there wasn't a shining halo around your head. You've converted an unregenerate scoundrel, my lady. Something our would-be friar hasn't been able to accomplish in ten years. When we come to a suitable place, Sir Guy, a prayer shall be said for the lad we left behind. Afterwards, I'll help you cleanse your soul. I can save you that deal, Squire. For I've just now vowed to atone my sins in the service of Her Highness. Oh, no. With your permission, Sir Guy. Grant it gladly, girl. Except that the price Her Highness set on freeing you was my vow that we'd leave the city. What say you now, my lady? We part here. When you reach the hills, find Captain Harati. We'll supply you with horses to continue your journey. Our journey ends when we find your people in the hills. Unless you'd also forbid us to serve them. My people shall be grateful. And so shall I. Then join us soon. Oh, vow or no vow, I'll come back for you. Such audacity. Such insolence. They are safely away, Torga. Would that you were with them, Your Highness. The barbarians rage through the palace grounds. The Kalmuk seeking the Englishman and the Tartar seeking you for the son of the Khan. We will be making better progress when the Kalmuks also seek me for their leader. There is one who will not seek you, Your Highness. The shaman. He's advised the commanders that unless by dawn they move to destroy the city and its people, he will send couriers to inform the mighty Khan. The couriers must not reach the Khan. Azalea, run quickly. Overtake Sir Guy and tell him of the couriers. And that Captain Herat will lead him to the gorge through which they must pass. But what if instead of couriers, it is the barbarian horde that rides at dawn? I don't think they will. Lily, take this ring to the son of the Khan. Say that I await him in my apartment. With the lady. Go quickly. Your Highness. Her Highness would have come to you, Lord, but she fears the Kalmuks. They stormed through the city and would seize her for their leader. Then it was from that jackal she was hiding. Yes, Lord. For you it is not fear she feels. Have all in readiness to attack at dawn. You're making me nervous. My lady, the tire commander rides through the gates. Find the Kalmuk there. Give him this bracelet and say to him that the son of the Khan is back in the palace and that I appeal to the mighty leader to come and save me from him. Go quickly through the catacombs. Remember, Naza, say only what I have told you to say. Above all, invent nothing else. There was a time when I was an honorable astrologer. Better a dishonorable one. But a lie. Take him 
away. Wait. Your life depends on what my astrologer will reveal to you. It will be wise for you to hear him. Speak quickly and be gone. Tonight, I saw in the stars a shadow at your back, Lord. It waits only for the right moment to strike you down. You brew a devil's broth, astrologer. When last you spoke, you promised I would rule the world. Now you warn me of death. It is time your lying tongue be still. Save your anger, Lord, for the traitor who would destroy you. Your words, too, are like snakes crawling a crooked path. No man of a horde would dare raise his hand against the son of a mighty Khan. Not even the Kalmuk chieftain? You saw him when he was drunk with wine. It made him bolder than he is. The blood of jackals is in his veins. Fear him not. Fire my path, dogs, and you die. Lower your weapons. Your jackal still roars like a lion. Stand aside! What seek you, Kalmuk? The princess of Samarkand. Is she a woman of your tent that you claim her? Before dawn, she shall be. What madness is this? She's your weapon. The astrologer's bleatings have bereft the Kalmuk of his senses. He sees himself a mighty man with a princess at his side. Do your questing for women elsewhere. The one you seek I have taken under my guard. Not even to the son of the Khan will I yield her. The leaders of the Horde tear each other like wolves. Over what? A woman. She has drawn your eyes to her. You crave her. So be it. But it shall be the judgment of the Khan to decide that I belong to this one or that one. And he who disobeys the will of the Khan dies at the hand of the Khan. Couriers go forth at dawn. Until they return from the Khan, the woman shall not leave. I myself will stand guard to see that she accomplishes no more evil. Now return to your warriors. Seek out and slay these people the sorceress is hidden from us. My Kalmuk shall not do battle until word comes from the mighty Khan that the woman is mine. Moved across that threshold and your blood will darken the dust of Samarkand. Stand guard here. By the wolves, nor shall any Tartar enter alive. Remain and protect what is mine. But, milady, what if Sir Guy fails to stop the couriers? You underestimate our English knight. I'm sure he is as resourceful as he is impudent. Summon Nina. Tell her we are well guarded now and that it is safe for us to sleep here. Say a prayer for their heathen souls. Just pray that our arrows find their marks. Bear ahead of the pagan fiends. One arrow's length with the wind. Together, lads. Now. At all times, see that four archers guard this pass. I'll go and post a patrol of mounted palace guards in one of the side gorges, in case our archers' arrows miss their marks. Found you sign of the couriers from Samarkand? That we rode for three days to the southwest, mighty Khan. We found no sign, no bodies, nothing to tell us that any couriers have been sent from the Shaman Tengri. By the winged furies. I shall wait no longer for word from that croaking raven. Couriers! Ride to Samarkand. Say to the Shaman Tengri, the mighty Khan, having received no message, sends none. But in black anger, he leads the horde upon the city. Go!
is still watching for a courier from the mighty Khan. How pleasant it would be if the son of the Khan could grow angry enough to throttle that old buzzard. Yesterday, I thought the Kalmuk bear would do it. He was raging at the shaman because no message had come from the great Khan. He accused the shaman of plotting against him, even of helping the Englishman to escape. And what did the shaman say? He screamed it was your doing, my lady, by witchcraft. The Kalmuk was almost convinced. Then he saw you on the balcony and no longer heard the shaman. Day after day, it is the same. The two commanders preen like peacocks. And I show myself on the balcony and look down upon them. But always the shaman is there. And neither has the courage to seek me. The moment one does, milady, the storm will break. And barbarians will be slaughtering each other in the streets. It's worth waiting for. Yes, lady. But I pray that the storm will soon break. A courier from the mighty Khan. Open the gate. Attacked in the past by archers clad in iron. The message from the great Khan. Quickly. He received none and sends none. In black anger, he leads his horde against the city. If one word passes your lips, that my courier did not reach the great Khan, molten silver shall silence your tongue forever. Summon the commanders to the palace. Lately, go swiftly to the balcony above the great hall. See if you can learn what message comes from the mighty Khan. Yes, milady. is his anger that his commands have not been obeyed. He rides on Samarkand. Hear now his orders. Before he reaches the city, he should have burned it to the ground, level its walls to the earth, so that the horsemen of the horde may ride over it as if it had never been. The courier of the great Khan found your missing Englishman. They skulk in the hills of the people of Samarkand. At sunrise, move out. Destroy them. What said the Khan of the woman? By his order, she will cast no more spells on the commanders of the Horde. She is to die by my hand and swiftly. Go. Carry out your orders. Or the mighty Khan will spill the lifeblood from your body. Barbarian arrow. 
thrown the lady? I think not, Lily. Or it would have been pointed at us. Welcome, Your Highness. And to you, Herat. But you come with only three men and swords undrawn. What if the barbarians had found the passage? In that case, Your Highness, two signal arrows would have sounded. And a thousand spears and arrows would be here to greet them. The alarm strategy is Sir Guy's. He's taught us much in the arts of war. He is now at the drill grounds, instructing the group captains in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The javelin, the noose, and a long knife belly rip. Your Highness. Then it is to Sir Guy that I must speak, and quickly. Advise Sir Guy that Princess Shalimar is here, and we'll await him at the forge. It is almost sharp enough to pierce a tartar shield. But not quite. Grind the point some more, lad. Goliath is a wondrous sight. Saints be praised, my lady. You have come at last. Sir Guy will be glad to see you. So my angel has returned. At moonrise, I was going to gather some of your lads and go to fetch you. For at high noon, a courier from the Khan slipped through the guards of the pass, and we feared for your safety. He brought word that the mighty Khan needs the horde on Samarkand. Then I'm glad that you're now safely with us, where you should have been all along. My people are no longer safe here, for the wounded courier reported that Persians and the missing Englishmen were hiding in the hills. The shaman Tengri has ordered all to be slaughtered before the great Khan arrives. The attack will take place at dawn. The devil it will. Then by St. Christopher, these barbarians shall know what it is to be in a battle. And all the minstrels of Christmas. This is one battle that no one shall sing about. Because there will be no battle. Now, what in the name Order of... all my people to leave the mountains without delay and flee toward Baghdad. They shall not remain here to be slaughtered. And slaughtered they will be if they leave, you pigeon-brained half-wit. The barbarians will pursue and catch them out in the open, where they'll be outnumbered ten to one. Fighting behind the rocks here, one man is worth ten. It is true, Your Highness. Here, at least, we can put up a battle. A man can dive at once, milady, and in what better cause? Whatever happens, you and Lely will be safely hidden deep in the cabin with the women and children. And you'll remain there until the barbarians leave. I see the wisdom of your strategy, Sir Guy. My people have done well to make you their commander. Spoken like a true princess, milady. An hour before dawn, sound the alarm. And what will my supreme commander do this night? The nights I usually spend inspecting the outposts, my lady, to make sure the sentries are alert. Here that my great grandmother would come to meet her shepherd, and here they would watch the morning star appear. I've seen it often, but alone. What was the fate of the shepherd? A kind one. The court astrologers read in the stars that the one ordained by Allah to rule at her side would be found waiting on the highest hill overlooking the city. And of course, in due time, the prophecy was fulfilled. Of course. The shepherd became my great-grandfather, the royal consort of Samarkand. And, uh, naturally, your great-grandmother had nothing to do with this uh, astounding prophecy. Who can tell? My great-grandmother was a very persuasive woman, even with court astrologers. And if you met a man here on the highest hill, overlooking the city. Could you be as persuasive as your great-grandmother? Only if the man were as persuasive as my great-grandfather. Don't you think it is time for you to inspect your outposts? Your sentries might be even less alert than their commander. 
strangely resembles my great-grandfather. Like the shepherd, I'll attend to my flock. But like your great-grandfather, I shall come back. Remain here. Go. Sir Guy returns, tell him that I have gone to learn what the stars shall reveal. But, my lady. Is the mighty commander of the Kalmuks not fit to sit in the palace with the son of the Tartar Khan? the great Khan and by the hand of the shaman. The Khan knows nothing of me. No couriers from Samarkand reached him. The shaman tricked you in order to give me to Juchi. You lie. The raven would not dare. You roar like a lion and yet you fear to take that which is yours from the son of the Khan. The mighty Tugluk fears not the Tata Peacock. But he cannot fight the winged furies of the sky god that the great Khan will loose against him. The warrior who sits at my side need have no fear. Even of Genghis Khan. Have you forgotten what the stars foretold? Are you the mighty conqueror from out of the east come to rule the world at my side? Or is what the son of the Khan says of you true that the blood of jackals runs in your veins? Many have turned against the Khan. All perished before the legions of the Khan. Stronger than the horde is the might of the prophecy protecting Samarkand. Khan will perish, battering at the walls of the city. But it is Juchi who is behind those walls. Through me, the gates will be opened to you. What seek you? The son of the Khan. I'm the Princess Shalimar. Open the gate. Do not enter the palace, I beg of you, my lady. I must follow to keep alive the courage of the Kalmuk bear. So that should he vanquish the Tartars, he will then lead his Kalmuks against the Horde. No. No, my lady, you must not sacrifice yourself. No sacrifice is too great. It might avert the slaughter of my people. Feels not the Kalmuk jackal.
see that no Tartar is left alive in the palace. I will leave none alive in the city. Shall be my greeting to the mighty Genghis Khan. Find the woman who is to rule at my side. Tell her I await her. Bring meat and wine. Then fetch the dancers from the Tartar tents. It is a night for feasting. And now, to, now to go quickly to the tomb and warn my maidens to flee to the hills. Your Highness, I will not leave you. You've already argued too long. Wait until the way is clear. Our mighty leader awaits you in the great hall. I was about to go to seek him. in the great hall. We're going above. Hurry your men through the catacombs. Wait for no signal. As soon as they're in position, launch the attack.
gift to the son of the Khan by his mighty father. Now they are mine. But I have no need of them and shall give them to my officers. They should please you, but you are not pleased. Why? I fear for you, my lord. Instead of feasting, your men should be preparing for the onslaught of the horde. <laughs> there will be warning enough. When the great Khan looks down upon his dead son, his roar will be heard across half of Asia. And it shall be his last roar. For his blood will flow as freely as his son's. My Kalmuks have no fear. Nor should you. Drink. smile. In my tent you promised much, but now at our wedding feast you sit like an image of stone. I like it not. In three days when the moon is full we shall wed, as is the custom of the royal house of Samarkand. I have conquered here and I take what is mine. I wait not on ancient customs. You are truly the mighty conqueror promised by the stars. And I am eager to taste wine with my royal master. I pledge you homage, my lord, for so long as I shall live. Guards! Guards!
darkness. You cannot fight the powers of darkness. The shaman broke through. The sorceress picked us. If we ever die here, she dies with us! Torches approach from the mountain. They spread out as far as the eye can see. Genghis Khan. It is time again to pray for miracles. Make sure your saints are not misled by the walls. The Tartars have battering rams. We'll not man the walls. When the barbarians enter the city, we'll meet them with the same tactics as we used against the Kalmucks. Get your men back into the catacombs. <laughs> Go below and stay below. I ask only to remain until the... should hear what his wise man has to say. My lady, I no means strategist yourself. to destroy Samarkand shall himself be destroyed. Back, mighty God. This is a city accursed, a charnel house of death. Madness, madness seized the Kamuks. They drew sword against the Tartars. Tuglux gods struck down your son. Then, out of the darkness, winged furies were loosed. Ghosts, ghosts of the long dead of Samarkand rose up. They destroyed the Kamuks. 
My eyes have seen the power of the evil spirits that rule this place. Go. Go quickly. Death awaits beyond these walls. How is it that you escaped this phantom death, Christian? Because I came not to destroy Samarkand. Pass through these gates if you dare, barbarian. But I doubt you will live long enough to count the bodies of your dead. Lift up the body of my son. Place it on my horse. I, the mighty Khan, thought that I alone held the earth in my hand. Now I see that there is a power greater than mine. I hold nothing that is mine alone. You will have much to tell when you return to the Christian kings. Squire John will carry my report on the barbarians. And no doubt burst mightily of another miracle. And you. It's a long way from the hill through that tunnel your great-grandmother built. I heartily agree with your great-grandfather. It's more comfortable here in the palace. And from here we can also see the morning star. a mighty barbarian host swept westward out of Asia to wage war upon the civilized peoples of the earth, obliterating all living things in its path. The tidal wave of death and destruction surged into Persia, where it met and slaughtered the army of Samarkand. Known as the Golden Horde, the Tartar legions and their allies, the Kalmyks, were the most ruthless military force the world had known. The slaves, cattle, and grain belong to the army. What is left is yours. Go with Juchi and take them. Am I a child that you must send Tugluck as co-commander? My orders are to be obeyed, not questioned. Go! <laughs> Raven, go you also to Samarkand. Be my eyes, 
watch over my son. Send word to me each day of all that my ears should hear. And from out of the west came a gallant band of men clad in iron. Crusaders, whose destiny was also Samarkand. It's a land of strange sights we're in. See who the fellow is, Gil. Christians, how came you here? Astride these stallions. Take me to your leader. That I will. need of them when we get to Samarkand. When last I saw your uncle, his exalted highness was being taken prisoner by the Kalmuk chieftain. But they keep no prisoners. By now, he too is dead. In command of the Horde was the great destroyer himself, the scourge of God, Genghis Khan. Behold your enemy, the Lord of Samarkand, whose army my Kalmyks have put to the sword. What think you of your prophecy now, Prince of Islam? What power will you call forth to save your city? Samarkand still stands, and he who comes to destroy Samarkand shall himself be destroyed. Mighty Khan, if he himself believe this legend, he will have stayed behind his walls and did not come against you with an army. My warriors are as many as the trees in the forest. Your ancient prophecies shall not stand in their path. It is not Allah's will that I live to see it. But in his time, the true God will smite you from the face of the earth. Oh. Juchi. This, my son, will be your authority. Destroy Samarkand. Return it to the earth whence it came. The Kalmyks come to you as allies, not vassals. A promise was made. What the Kalmyks conquer belongs to me, Tugluk, the leader of the Kalmyks. My word is like steel, not to be broken. What do you desire, Tugluk? The spoils of Samarkand. This 
Mr. Sagai. I'm Captain Harat. My horse went lean. I have need of a mount to reach Samarkand. <laughs> then we're well met. For that's our destination, too. And we're in a fair way of being lost. How far is it? A good 12 hours ride. Then you shall rest here with us and welcome. Tomorrow we'll ride with you. Meanwhile, Squire John will. Squire! Squire John! By the saints, Sir Guy, this is no time to wake an honest man. <laughs> He'll tend your wounds, Captain. Oh, it is Tartar blood, not mine. And there's no time to rest. The army of Samarkand has been destroyed by the barbarian horde. The city must be warned. The barbarians, you say? We've ridden far to find those heathen. And by the saints, I'm afraid we have. A fire arrow. I've seen many such in the Crusades. Oh, these hills swarm with barbarian patrols. They've seen us. It's their signal to close in. We must ride for our lives, quickly. The devil we will. We'll give them a warm reception and an empty one. Get ready, lads. Unpleasant guests are approaching. Thank you.